In this episode of A Very Not During Crime, we'll be taking a look at one of the longest and saddest unsolved child murder cases in recent times. The gruesome act happened as far back as 2001 when it involved a young Nigerian boy. The and underground problem of child trafficking. The boy whose body was found in the Thames. When the headless torso of a young black boy was pulled from the River Thames, the discovery of the torso of a young African boy floating in the River Thames in London led to suspicions the boy, Adam, as the police called him. But it's the last thing you think you're ever going to see in the River Thames. It's, um, it was so shocking. Oh, I'm never going to forget it for as long as I live. If you like this channel, you can support us by becoming a member. We would love that. You can also support us by sharing, liking, commenting and subscribing if you haven't done so. Thank you. Yeah, I was heading um, into town on a business meeting across the bridge and happened to glance out. And the tide was quite high at the time. I remember it was an incoming tide and I thought it was a tailor's mannequin because I could see the indentation on the top, which was a belly button. The furthest thing from your eyes is that, is that it's a body. On the 21st of September in 2001, Aidan Minter was on his way to a business meeting, walked in through the Tower Bridge in central London. It seemed like it was going to be just another regular day, but little did he know that it wasn't, as his eyes got a glimpse of what he initially assumed was a tailor's mannequin floating on the river. As the floating object drew closer, Aidan realized that it was no mannequin at all. Seeing the wounds on the headless body prompted Aiden to call the police. The body was that of a child, a boy, who was of African origin. And from careful observation, the police suspected that the body may have been in the river for as long as 10 days. The only piece of clothing the boy had on was a pair of orange shorts, and this served as a false lead. The label on the shots read, Kids and Company. Since the police were still unable to identify the boy, they decided to give him a name. They called him Adam. I was recovered from the River Thames. Now we've not identified the child and consequently we've taken the unprecedented step of giving him a name. It's Adam. And I took a step further by offering a £50,000 reward for anyone who could provide vital information that could lead to an arrest. They carried out further tests on the body which showed that Adam would have been between the ages of four and seven years old. The test also showed that he had been living in Africa not too long before he was murdered. Autopsy traces found cuffs to rub in his body, and this prompted some other questions. Was Adam ill? And if so, did his killer care enough to give him the medicine? The way Adam was dismembered caused Espat to develop an opinion that his mother was of the ritualistic kind. Initially, it suggested that there was a mutri ritual killing, which had its root in Southern Africa. Well, the police uh, initially brought in forensic, uh, a forensic pathologist from South Africa who tried to, to, to look at the body and said perhaps there was something ritualistic about the death. Uh, the police then seemed to get into a bit of a dead end with it, didn't really know where they were going because they had no identity for the boy, they, they really didn't know actually what kind of ritual killing it was and uh, they had nothing to go on actually. And it is an extraordinary fact that one more tide and the torso would have been washed away 
out to sea and uh, nobody would have ever known any more about this. Their inquiry took police all the way to South Africa, where there are believed to be several hundred Muti killings each year. But however much they've learned, the murder won't be solved until they find out who the young boy was. They've had some high-profile assistance. The motor ritual involves the removal of a victim's body parts, which are then used by witch doctors to prepare medicine for clients who are looking for good fortune. The former president of the country appealed to South Africans to assist the UK police to solve the crime. He asked that Adam's family come forward, that is if they were in the country at all. Nelson Mandela said, and I quote, Scotland Yard informs me that any indications of their investigation are that the ball comes from somewhere in Africa. So if anywhere, if, remotest... if anywhere, even in the remotest village of our continent, there is a family missing a son of that age, please contact the police in London. Unfortunately, his efforts bore no fruit, as no substantial information was brought forward regarding the case. It was soon established that the mutilation of the body wasn't consistent with the motor ritual rights after all. For the consultations, steady investigation in another direction, to the West African region of the continent. In July 2002, social workers in Glasgow were concerned about the well-being and safety of two young girls who, at the time, were living with an adult female. The woman in question, Joyce Ozegiedi, had, um, had already told an immigration officer that she was involved in one of her children previously being sacrificed by her husband. And uh, the immigration officer, when he heard about the evidence that I was suggesting and the forensics were suggesting, told the police in London who then began to take an interest in her and um, ultimately paid her a visit. And we found in her apartment in Glasgow an identical pair of shorts to the ones which were clothed on the torso uh, Adam, very rare, unusual shorts that were, uh, we know were bought in from a Woolworths chain in Germany. And so the evidence trail began suddenly mm. to build up and we, we began to build quite a big picture about uh, this woman, Joyce, and the fact that she had her, indeed had Adam in her care and had brought him into the country. The woman named Joyce Osagiedi was a Nigerian who was somewhere around her early 30s. At the time the social care workers visited her home, they found what could be described as ritualistic objects. Joyce rambled on about the need for a sacrifice and this made the social workers afraid for the girl's safety. In an attempt to save the girls, a court hearing was held in 2002 where Joyce told several weird stories about killings, sacrifices, and secret courts. Joyce's stories prompted the Glasgow police to reach out to the homicide unit in London because of the glaring similarities which he had with the Adam case. Detective Nick Coleman flew over to Glasgow to question Joyce in such a home, and to his greatest surprise, he found clothes that had the same kit since company label found on Adam's shot at the time his father was discovered. Joyce was arrested as the police were convinced that she was directly or indirectly involved with Adam's murder. She denied knowledge of Adam's killing but was unable to explain the coincidence with the same children's clothes. The, this, this one's a second hand. The police were unable to charge Joyce due to insufficient evidence, but she was mandated to remain in Glasgow at a time. We searched her flat in Scotland and we found clothing uh, from the same company, indeed the same size, as worn by the child we now know as Adam. Um, that was very significant for us.
A whole year passed after Adam's murder and a memorial service was held in London City Hall. In attendance were the police officers, pathologists, scientists and other aspects that were involved in the case. Investigators continued with their forensic work and around December of 2002, evidence had surfaced from Adam's DNA that showed he had West African origin. Groundbreaking forensic tests on Adam's bone marrow were done, and a result pointed towards Benin City as Adam's birthplace. Benin City is located in the southwestern part of Nigeria. Coincidentally, or rather unsurprisingly, Benin City is also Joyce Osagere's home city. Another interesting discovery in the case was the pollen samples found in Adam's gut. They showed that Adam had only been living in the southeast of England for a few days before his murder. To add to that, there was another substance found in his stomach, which looked like it was made from African river clay. Tests showed that the substance included grounded bones, vegetables and quartz. Also, the presence of ash suggested that a mixture had been burned before Adam was forced to eat it. This could explain the cough medicine that was previously found in his stomach as the syrup would have been sweet enough to help the poor child swallow the bond concussion. In November of 2002, Joyce Osagiri was deported back to Nigeria. Detective Nico Kamo, in the company of his boss, Will O'Reilly, escorted her back aboard a private plane. They both hoped Joyce would confess before they landed, but she didn't. The officers didn't get off the plane when they arrived in Lagos, Nigeria. Joyce was dropped off and investigation slowed, with no new leads or breaks in the case. When the UK police arrested Joyce, they found just two contacts on her phone. One of the contacts was a man named Musa Kamara, who was later traced to a house in London. While searching Musa's house, the police discovered an animal's skull which had been pierced with a nail. They also discovered some liquid potions, as well as small packs containing what looked like sand and ash. Among the other strange items found in Musa's home was a videotape with a label, Rituals. On the tape, there was a video of an adult male being decapitated. Detectives also found out that Musa's real name was Kingsley Ojo, but with no evidence linking him to Adam's murder, Musa was released on bail and allowed to leave. Nonetheless, the police had strong evidence that Musa or Kingsley had involvement with human trafficking. For this reason, he was put under surveillance as soon as he was released. In July of 2003, after months of surveillance, 21 of Musa's associates who lived in different parts of London were arrested, including Musa himself. In October of 2003, botanists at Kew Garden received samples of plant remains that were found in Adam's gut and it was discovered that a boy had been fed two separate types of plant. The first was the calabar bean, also known as the doomsday plant. The dosage of a doomsday plant found in Adam's body was more than enough to cause a paralysis, but not nearly enough to prevent pain. The second plant found in the stomach was the datura plant, which is known to cause hallucinations. Detectives suggest that Adam was given the plant shortly before his throat was cut open which means that a child could have possibly died a long and painful death. Musa Kamara The police had more than enough evidence to charge Musa Kamara for human trafficking, although they still didn't have enough evidence to charge him in connection with Adam's case. In July of 2004, he pleaded guilty to the charges leveled against him and received a four-year jail sentence as punishment for his crime. It was learned that while Musa was in jail, he lived like a king and continued to perform juju ceremonies for other inmates. After spending about a year in jail, Musa reached out to the UK police and offered to help. He claimed that he had secret recordings of Joyce Osagiade, but that too was a dead end. According to him, he wanted to help track down Adam's killer and clear his own name. He was interviewed by the police after he had served his four-year term and he continued providing information to them regarding human trafficking rings. Musa even accused another lady of being responsible for Adam's murder, 
but after being put under surveillance for months, the police could find nothing that implicated her. Finally, in December of 2006, five years after the gruesome killing, Adam's body was buried in an unmarked London cemetery. The funeral service was attended by several police officers in forensic who had worked on the case, including Koma and O'Reilly. Two years later, in 2008, Musa was deported back to Nigeria as the police had reason to believe he was still involved in human trafficking. Meanwhile, back in Nigeria, Joseph Sagiedi was interviewed by the police one more time. She admitted that she knew Adam during her stay in Hamburg and was indeed the one that bought the Orange Kids and Company's shot for him. But that was it. She didn't admit to knowing anything about his killing and obviously was never going to do so. A woman who knew Joyce from Hamburg finally surfaced. Her name, Ria Mathis, a social care worker who claims she met Joyce and her two girls on more than one occasion. She also said she remembers seeing Joyce with a little boy, one who was about Adam's age. This was around the summer of 2001. This means Raya Mathis was one of the last few people who may have seen Adam alive. According to Raya Mathis, she said, and I quote, I think about the case regularly. For me, he was a very shy, a bit, and attentive child. He was completely introverted and redrawn. He remained in one spot and didn't move. Joyce treated the boy as if he was a necessary evil to her, like she had to drag him along with her because she didn't want to let him out of her sight, or like she took him along so he wouldn't have to be alone. Investigations had started getting colder as every possible clue led to another dead end. However, the police followed up on Rhea's statement, and this prompted them to search through Joyce's belongings which she had left behind with a friend in Hamburg. The search led them to find something interesting, a pile of photographs, one of which had her standing with a small boy. It was later discovered that a picture was taken in 2001, the same year Adam was killed. Detective Kalmer was a bit skeptical about whether the boy in the picture was Adam, but the case had since been transferred to another investigating team. The new team trapped Joyce down in Nigeria and asked her some question, but she later admitted that the boy in the picture was indeed Adam. In fact, she said his real name was Ipomusa, and that she had been the one taking care of him before handing him over to a man called Bauer. It's lively boy, it's very nice boy, and it's very, it's also intelligent. You gave to Bawa. What was the name of that baby? Ikmomosa, baby Adam. They also call him. His native name is Ikmomosa. Is this the baby you looked after? Is yes. this the baby that you gave to Bawa? Yes. Then mm. this is the boy you looked after for a short time as well? In Germany for one year. At this time, it seemed the mystery of Adam's death had been solved and that a possible killer had been found. Unfortunately, the investigating officers could not positively identify the boy as Adam, as the body they found in the Thames had no head, therefore no face. To make matters more confusing, Joyce later said that the boy in the picture was not Adam or Ipomusa. She said that the boy's name was Danny, who officers actually traced down to a location in Hamburg. Then that song, the first song. No, she now says that was all a misunderstanding. The pictures of a child called Danny, the son of a friend in Germany. This is Danny, Joyce's friend's son. Now that's the picture. Do you know who that is? Yes. Who? That's me. <laughs> well, we're pleased to see that you're, you're, you're fine and well. What does it make you, you feel? A little bit surprising, but you see me, I'm okay. An interview with some of the neighbors in Joyce's home actually revealed that Joyce had a long history of mental instability, hence the differing story. One more picture was shown to Joyce and she instantly recognized the man in it as Bauer, the man she claimed she handed Adam over to in Hamburg. Interestingly, the man in the picture was Musa Kamara, also known as Kingsley Ojo, who had been arrested and deported back to Nigeria by the UK authorities. Upon hearing this, Musa was traced in Algeria by a team of BBC reporters. He didn't agree to meet face to face, but said he could speak over the phone. All the same, he remained steadfast that he had nothing to do with Adam's death. And in all truth, there is no evidence to directly connect him to the boy's murder. 
even though the UK police still believe that he is the remaining piece of the puzzle. Adam's murder was declared a cold case in 2013 and it became even colder when Joyce's brother Victor told the investigating BBC reporters that Joyce had died. Joyce was one of the very few witnesses and suspects in the case and with her gone it seemed we may never know for sure who Adam's killers are. Aidan Minter, the man who first discovered Adam's floating body. Sadly, he was diagnosed with acute post-traumatic stress disorder. This could be due to what he had witnessed in the form of Adam's lifeless body. He said, and I quote, It's the shock of why is it there? Who did it? That's the hardest thing. He was a small boy with a personality, and it was cruelly taken away from him in some sort of ritualistic murder. Unquote. Nick Kama of the UK police, who is now retired, expressed how frustrating the lack of hunters had become. He said, and I quote, This was an innocent child. There were people responsible for his death who haven't been brought to justice. Twenty years on, I wish we knew the identity of Adam and his parents. In reality, he is a missing child from a family who probably don't know he's buried here in London. Unquote. While the exact number of people trafficked can't be known, as some cases go unreported, according to NAPTIP, 1,173 persons were trafficked in 2018 alone. Estimates released by the Global Slavery Index in July of 2018 indicate that there are 40.3 million victims of modern slavery worldwide. The human trafficking trade is a $150 billion global industry. Nigeria remains a source for transit and destination for this sort of business. So be aware of friends and relatives that offer to give a better life to your child or ward abroad. The horrors that kids go through sometimes are simply unimaginable. Be careful and be aware. Thanks for watching this video. Kindly share your thoughts in the comment section below. And don't forget to support us. You can do so and hit the notification bell, like, share and subscribe to our channel. Remember, stay safe and remain blessed. Thank you.